Welcome back to the best Android app of the month, this time for August 2025. You know what? Let's kick things off with a banger. Athena is a brand new free and open source app that's officially become my new favorite way for blocking ads, trackers, or even malware across my phone without murdering my battery. And it works everywhere, whether I'm in an app or browsing a website. Just flip a few toggles and boom, you're covered. But it gets even better. You can just straight up cut off internet access for any app on your phone. It's perfect for stuff like clock apps or offline games that don't really need Wi-Fi anyway. You don't even need root to use this, but if you do have it, even better, you can have more control over the entire app. Oh, and the cherry on top is that it's got a slick material you think, which is nice. Okay, it's been forever since we got a fresh third-party launcher that actually tries something new, but Mer Launcher is here to change that. Instead of the same old grid of icons, it's all about live tiles and widgets. And no, these aren't the clunky squares from Windows phones. They're material you themed with rounded corners, different sizes, and matching colors. Some tiles even show notifications, so you get info at a glance. Yeah, it might look a little busy at first, but you can actually resize anything however you'd like, and you can organize everything into separate cards too. Like I've got all my productivity widgets up top, and then social stuff down below. You can also swipe to different pages. I've set universal search to be on the far left, app categories on the right, and then the actual app drawer when you swipe up. But it's all super customizable too. That said, it's still pretty new, so you might run into a few bugs here and there, but honestly, it's a super unique launcher that already gives you a ton right out the gate. And hey, those are just two out of the 15 apps that I got lined up for you for this month. As always, I'm just one dude digging up these hidden gems, so if you end up downloading even one app from this entire list, do me a solid and smash the thumbs up button. Last month, we hit 8,000 likes, which is insane. Maybe this time we can shoot for 10,000. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, and stick around to the end, because as usual, I've saved the best app on this list for last. But for now, let's keep going. If you're into torrenting, you've got to check out this new free open source app called Torrent Search. It's seriously the easiest way to find and download torrents from a bunch of different sources. First off, the UI is super clean. It's built around Material 3, so it looks great and is easy to use. You can search for pretty much anything. Apps, games, books, you name it. And when you tap on a result, you get all the usual options, like you can download the torrent, copy or share the magnet link, or even open the original site. It works really smoothly, and honestly, it saves you from dealing with those sketchy torrent sites that are packed with pop-ups, trackers, or even worse, malware. This is way safer to use and a cleaner option too. Next up, screenshot editor, blur text. And no, it's not just another basic photo editor, this one's all about hiding sensitive info in your screenshots with just a single tap. So let's say you screenshot your bank statement or take a photo of an important document. You just load it into this app and it automatically scans it for any text. Then you can tap on whatever info you want to hide and choose from effects like blur, pixelate, or blend. My favorite's the blend option because it makes text vanish from the shot completely with no trace left behind. Plus you can even highlight or underline stuff add your own text, and a bunch more. Once you're done with it, just save the image, and boom, it's ready to be shared without any of your sensitive info being on it. All right, moving on, we've got Speak That, a simple free app that reads your notifications out loud. Why? Well, if you've got vision issues, or you just want to hear your notifications without picking up your actual phone, it's perfect. Now sure, Android already has the TalkBack feature built in, but that thing reads everything on your screen and completely changes how you interact with your phone. It's really meant for full accessibility needs. With Speak That, it's way more focused. Instagram notified you. Facundo Holes. Facundo, how you doing bro? It just reads notifications and you can even customize it so it only reads ones from specific apps like your Gmail or your messaging app or whatever you want. You can also blacklist certain words, tweak the voice speed, uh, maybe even change the language, all that good stuff. Obviously, it's not meant for everyone, but I did find it super handy for when I just wanted to know what message came in. I just read it out loud. Next up is Tomato, which is a Pomodoro timer. What really blew me away here is the design. I mean, it just might be the best looking timer app that I've ever seen. It follows Google's new Material 3 Expressive design, and it's full of all those little squiggles, bouncy animations, 
playful buttons. I mean, it just feels alive. I hope more apps go this route. Now, in case you don't know how Pomodoro timers work, it's all about helping you stay focused by working in short bursts. Personally, I do 30 minutes of focus work, no multitasking, no distractions. Then I take a five minute break to reset, and then it's back to another focus session. Then a longer break too. You just keep cycling through just like that. It's actually super effective at boosting productivity while avoiding burnout. There's even a stats menu to help you keep track of focus streaks, and you can tweak the intervals as well if needed within the settings. It's pretty effective. Okay, weirdly enough, some phones, even Google Pixels and Samsung devices, still don't have a built-in way to lock individual apps. I mean, sure, they've got features like private space or secure folder to lock and hide apps, but outside of that, you can't just lock out any unhidden apps with a passcode or fingerprint, like how you can on OnePlus phones or Nothing phones. That's where AppLock comes in. It's free, open source, and lets you lock apps with a passcode, fingerprint, or face unlock. It's super easy to use, works well, and even comes with material you theming so it blends right with your system. Definitely one to keep installed. You know, most people don't realize just how often online attacks happen. I mean, it's literally every single day now, even on your phones too. Seriously, just this month, Google Gemini had a vulnerability that let phishing attacks slip right into emails. Pretty scary stuff. And if you're not using a VPN, you're basically just asking for it. That's why for years now, I've been using Surfshark, yep, the sponsor of this video, to keep my online life locked down. And here's the best part. It's crazy affordable, like cheaper than your daily Starbucks coffee. Plus, you can share one account with all your friends and family so they stay protected too. But Surfshark does more than just help you stop online attacks. Let's say you're signing up for something and the site then asks for your email. Boom, Surfshark gives you a throwaway one that still forwards stuff to your actual inbox. And if that email starts getting spammed, you can just delete it later. It even gives you a totally separate identity to use online too, which is pretty slick. Oh, and let's not forget that Surfshark also unblocks geo-restricted content on YouTube, Netflix, you name it. Plus, when you're shopping online, you won't get hit with those shady location-based price hikes too. So head over to surfshark.com htm to lock down your data and don't forget to use code HTM at checkout for an extra four months for free. Seriously, it's a steal. Don't sleep on this. All right, this next app's for rooted users only, so if you're not rooted, just skip ahead. It's called Reddident, and it's a really weird name, but it's also really simple and useful for some. It basically just removes all the ads from the official Reddit app. That means no more promoted posts in your feed or random advertisements buried in the comment section. Just clean scrolling. Plus, setting it up is super simple. You just grant it root access, and you also enable it with the LSBOS module. Once that's done, you're good to go. Okay, apparently we're putting Material themes on everything now, and I'm honestly not mad about it. Material Player is a simple, no-nonsense video player that's clean, ad-free, and supports most video formats, including streaming from links. The interface is super minimal too, you can just browse by folders, or you can also swap it to actually just show your videos in one place. It's also got picture-in-picture -picture mode, gesture controls for brightness and volume, easy scrubbing too, subtitle support, everything you'd actually need within a video player, but without all the clutter too. I mean, sure, there are more advanced video players out there, but this one nails the basics. No in-app purchases, no weird gimmicks, just clean and simple playback. Sometimes that's all you really want. Now, I don't usually cover widget apps because most get abandoned after a year. And honestly, we've already created hundreds of awesome widgets with new ones getting released every month now. You can check them out on our Patreon. But One UI Widgets is different. It's the only paid app on this entire list, but I think it's worth it. I mean, you get over 240 widgets that match Samsung's One UI style. We're talking clocks, battery info, calendar widgets, photo frames, basically all the classic One UI widgets. And then there's even the fun stuff like digital clocks straight from the lock screen, quick setting toggles so that you can drop them on your home screen and control it, a calculator, even a few little games too to play around with. And the best part is that you don't even need an extra app like KWGT to get these working. Just drop them in straight from your widgets panel, resize them however you want, and they're good to go. Plus, they even follow your system's light or dark theme automatically. 
And since we're on the topic of Samsung's One UI, here's a prep gap to follow it up. One URL. It's hands down my new favorite URL shortener app because it actually looks like it was designed by Samsung. This isn't your basic link shortener. You get to choose from multiple URL providers. You can also set a custom alias so your link isn't just random characters. You can add a description too. And it even generates QR codes that perfectly match Samsung's native style. It's ridiculously polished for something so simple. Next, I have My Mind, which has also become my go-to for saving literally everything. We're talking bookmarks, notes, tweets, YouTube videos, articles, images, videos. If you can see it on your phone, you can save it. The design is beautifully minimal and saving anything is really as easy as just sharing it to the app from Android's native sharing menu. Inside the app, it'll even use AI to automatically summarize what you save. Uh, it'll add smart tags and it'll even let you organize everything into categories too. And once you've saved over 50 things too, there's a serendipity tab that basically helps you clean the house. Just swipe left or right, Tinder style to get rid of stuff you no longer really need. It's such a cool way to keep everything organized. Okay, this next one is oddly fascinating. Airplanes.live, an open source app that shows you every single plane and helicopter flying near you in real time. You can tap any aircraft to see its model, altitude, speed, even its flight path. And if you also want to track a specific flight, maybe your friend or family member is on it, you can also search for it. If you're obsessed with a particular plane and you're hoping it flies over your house, you can add it to your watch list to get alerts of when it does. All this data comes from aviation enthusiasts worldwide with their own receivers, so it's scary accurate. Definitely a fun one to play around with. If you want a no frills, super clean news reader app, check out Raven. It's free, open source, and doesn't come with any of the usual nonsense like ads, trackers, or any annoying pop-ups, just clean news. Like right from the subscriptions tab, you can follow your favorite outlets and categories, and the articles load crazy fast too. Just the text, images, and links. You can also save stories to read later with a quick swipe, or you can tap on the icon in the corner to open the original page if you really want more context. It also supports RSS and Morse, so you can add almost any website. It's just a really solid, lightweight news app. If you ever need to share your screen with another device, ScreenStream makes it shockingly easy. If you're on the same Wi-Fi, just set the app to local mode, hit start stream, and then type the link it gives you into a browser on the other device. That's it. Your screen now shows up instantly. Now, if the person's somewhere else entirely, just switch to global mode and have them go to screenstream.io. There, they just type in the ID and password that you give them through the app, and boom, they should be connected. There's also an RTSP mode if you want to stream directly to a media server too. It's super handy for remote help, demos, or casting to just a bigger screen in general. Anyway, tap on this card right here to watch a full playlist of all the previous best apps of the month, or this one to see how the new Material 3 Expressive update is looking so far. Don't forget to drop a thumbs up if this video helped you download even one app. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!